Hey everybody, it's David Bourne from NewWildMedia.com. Welcome to part two of my two-part conversation with Scott Perry, founder of Creative On Purpose and author of the recent book, Endeavor, Cultivate Excellence While Making a Difference. Scott uh, calls himself a husband, a father. He's a a longtime guitar instructor, and he's also uh, an instructor and coach in several of Seth Godin's online courses, marketing courses, and there's... um, You know, you probably know about Seth Godin. If you don't, you need to look Seth up. Uh, Scott works with him, and he also works uh, with some of his own personal clients. So in this episode, we talk about a ton of stuff, uh, including something that Seth Godin talks about a lot, this smallest viable audience idea. There's a powerful sequence that we talk about that's related to that, and We also talk about just why sharing our work freely in ways that helps others contributes to the greater good. And it's really one of the best ways to bring us happiness in the end. So let's get right into part two with Scott Perry. But again, back to the help helping people. So, uh, I know that my struggle, which is very similar to other people's struggle, is that I've done a lot of work. I've done a lot of creative work, but the getting it out to people is is harder for some of us. And the resistance is great with some of us. Um, back to Stephen Pressfield's name for, you know, those those demons that that hold us back and want us to be safe and, and don't do anything too crazy because aren't you just fine how you are right now? And then there's the more inspired uh, part of us that you know encourages keep going, keep going. So we've we've got those two things. But so talk more about this whole helping people, and because as someone who is starting out, um, and it's new, I know it's true for everyone when they start a new project. It's like okay, you're birthing this thing. Are people going to like it? Or, or am I going to get enough followers? Am I going to get any followers? Uh, you know, I'm ashamed of how many, how small my list is. I'm ashamed of how many, how small my numbers are. Uh, talk about that shift that I think we need to make into saying, okay, yeah, numbers might matter. I mean, you got to, you got to reach people. Can you talk about that? Because the internet presents us with so many challenges to say, well, numbers matter. Like I, you, 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 you briefly uh, touched on that in my mind when you started talking about these louder voices earlier. So I think that, so you mentioned the, uh, the coaching and online programs. I do. So I have completed Seth Godin's all MBA, his marketing seminar, his uh, bootstar. Uh, well, his podcasting seminar and I am currently a coach in the marketing seminar and I'm just wrapping up coaching in the first ever session of the bootstrappers workshop in the marketing seminar in the bootstrappers workshop and in the podcasting fellowship Seth talks about identifying your smallest viable audience it's the central theme of his current book that kind of comes out of his work in the marketing seminar called the name of the book is called this is marketing it's excellent everybody should grab it yeah it's great the thing about a smallest viable audience is that it's small it's viable and it's an audience (laughs) it meaning you don't need to be so you you said you, you you referenced um how we might feel ashamed of the size of our list. Well, I would assert that shame is an invitation no one needs to accept under any circumstances, because what is true is that if you can find 10 people that will engage and invest in your idea, you have established an audience 
and viability. And what, what the magic of the smallest viable audience, as Seth addresses it, is that with a small audience, you're putting yourself on the hook. You have to earn that trust. Well, first, first you just have to earn the awareness. Then you have to earn the attention. Then you have to earn the engagement. Then you have to earn their permission. And then you earn their trust. And then way, way down the line, you finally earn their investment. Although mm -hmm. they're investing at the beginning with their time and their attention. Right. Sure. But when, when it's time to, viability means, will they pay you for the solution to their problem that they, that they have? Will they pay you to enhance their lives in the way that you're able to enhance their lives. And when you have a very small audience, you're not going to get away with acting like a spammy advertiser or a, 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 a clickbaity, you know, baiting trickster. You're going to have to look people in the eye you're going to have to engage them with empathy. You're going to have to be able to see them and understand them and understand their dreams and aspirations and their fears and their anxieties and their problems and uh, all of that. Hmm. And then you, then you have the opportunity to serve them. And some of that will be generously sharing your free content, like your blog posts, which are really how most of us refine our ideas. I didn't have mm -hmm. a clue as to what creative on purpose. Well, first of all, creative on purpose was not creative on purpose in the beginning of it. It's had yeah. three different names, <laughs> right? But it was through the per process of blogging and sharing and listening and blogging and sharing and listening that yeah. I, I identified my purpose and I was able to find in a tr uh, find my audience, find them where they were, and engage with them there, and entice some of them onto my platform where I could where I could communicate with them directly. Yeah. Um, so that's part of that helping others piece is you know you you want to you you have to have an audience if you're going to have viability. Um, you're going to have to have some sort of paid offering if you're going to have viability. Um, but the, the deeper part of when I say this is not a self-help book, it's a help others book, is it goes back again to Stoic philosophy. Stoic philosophy, uh, and, and the, in the beginning of my Endeavor book, steals these two ideas from um, Stoic philosophy and then adds the creativity piece to it. The Stoics, but the, one of the reasons why Stoicism continues to be relevant today is because the Stoics just by chance got two very important things right. The things that, two, two of the essential defining human characteristics are, number one, our social nature. It's how mm -hmm. we survived as a species when we were neither the fastest nor the strongest mm -hmm. uh, nor the most numerous, right? So it was right. our ability to gather and communicate and collaborate that enabled us to survive and that social instinct is not going anywhere and in yeah. fact scientifically biologically we are incapable of existing unless we have others around us and then our capacity for reason doesn't mean that we're always behaving like rational reasonable people but we have that capacity we have the ability to think through interesting problems and come up with innovative solutions, right? And that, mm. so for me, there's that third piece, the creativity that sure. we have this ability to make stuff, whether that's physical goods or conceptual goods or interpersonal uh, assets. We have these three things at our disposal. And because the social nature is such an inherent part of who we are, it only, and again, this comes from my love of Stoic philosophy, the Stoics say that our part of our duty as a human being is to promote the health and happiness of our fellow human beings. Hmm. And that is how we ourselves can be, 
um, enhance our character and therefore our happiness. And so that's why to me, it's such an essential part of the process and the approach that I'm encouraging people to um, adopt or adopt whatever parts they, they find relevant of the Endeavor um, book. And it's because it, it works. It because uh, it, I've, I've seen it work in my life. I've seen it work in my coaching, uh, both as a guitar teacher for 30 plus years and as a coach in Seth Godin's marketing seminar and bootstrappers walk workshop. Um, and I'll just circle all the way back to something you said at the beginning, um, about, uh, you, you kind of reference this, uh, in your work, you, you know, that you, you found that there's a kind of a resonance between what you were seeking to do and what I am doing. And what I found in the, in coaching Seth's programs, is Seth just attracts people like us. Yeah. There, there are just, I can't even count the number of people that I've met where I think you and I are just, we're doing, working on the same project. And sometimes it's in, <laughs> in entirely different domains, but we're sure. all doing the same thing. We're all yeah. in a way, I just feel like we're all, you know, we're all just trying to save the world. Right, right. Exactly. Which but since you can't say, you know, that's too big. We can't save right. the world. So what we do is we do these little projects. We put these right. little things out into the world that are the 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 drip, 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 the step, step, steps towards, you know, promoting more goodness in the world. Right. Uh do you think that this creative force, whatever this is, is doing that? The force the what we might call intuition or I think that um, it's the only chance that we have to live more fulfilling, satisfied, healthier and happier lives. Uh, again, um, mm -hmm. we are not creatures. We've never been creatures that feel that we are thriving by just accepting what is we are. We are creatures by nature that, feel most alive when we are uh, when we are stepping into the unknown when we are stepping into mm. the un you know this when we mm -hmm. Seth says this might not work you know human beings are do that, that that kind of work all the time and in the current age if it doesn't work it's unlikely that we're going to die in the process in right the, we have instead is opened up the possibility of learning and of building resilience and mm -hmm. of continuing to connect and um, communicate with others, which means that as long as we're again, doing all this with integrity and intention that we have the, the, the possibility to still get up tomorrow morning and try something else that might not work. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a really it's a it's a great time that we live in. Although that makes me think of the things that you mentioned earlier, the forces that that would rather us uh, be happy consuming, and you know keep keep consuming. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's what's going to make us happy. When I think a lot of us are waking up to you know I've tried that and it's not it's not it. <laughs> what's next? <laughs> Seth makes the point, and this is marketing and in the marketing seminar, that all marketing really is is stories. And marketing mm -hmm. to the toughest customer is marketing to ourselves because the stories mm -hmm. that we tell ourselves mm -hmm. are the ones that we have to get a grip on first and foremost. So the people, you know, if you are someone that is telling themselves a story that I, I'm not creative or that, um, mm. you know, freelancing or entrepreneurship is something other people do, or art is something that other people do. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, you're entitled to that story. We, we our, our perception and, uh, is one of the two things that we have ultimate agency and control over. We control the way we choose to see, see things. We also then control what we choose to do next. Now, if you want to continue to to see that your situation is immutable uh, and you're just going to continue to sit on the couch and uh, watch television. That's, that's a choice. Yeah. But 
it's actually really quite simple. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is simple to change your mind. You just simply say, well, I am actually a creative human being. I can mm. prove that right now because I can create, I can make a different choice. I can choose not to watch TV today. Mm -hmm. I can instead choose to sit in front of uh, a blank piece of paper and turn it into an unblank piece of paper. Mm. And not be attached to the outcome. Yes. Very uh, well said. Particularly someone else's opinion of that, what was once a blank piece of paper. And that can be a really scary thing to folks. And as a musician, uh, I think you may, and I'm, I'm making an assumption here, early in life, you got some feedback that was positive. And a lot of people got feedback that was negative. Uh, one of my, uh, a woman who, who liked to call me her art mother, she was, uh, she taught a class and I decided to take it. It was intuitive painting. And, and I, I came to come to learn that she, um, she was a member of the Wyeth family of the, and they had told her she was, she didn't measure up <laughs> yet. Uh, here she was in her later years and she's teaching this art class and called intuitive painting. And I had just, it really changed my life in a big way. And come to find out, uh, I moved and inquired about her and, and come to find out that she'd had cancer that whole time. I didn't know it. And this was sort of her last, mm. um, you know, her last chance to, to be creative. That is fascinating. The yeah. very last chapter of my book is called The Final Flourish. And it's mm. about essentially a lesson learned from a hundred-year-old stamen mindset apple tree that was on our farm uh and that um that that was it, act, it was dying and its final act was to put forth the most apples it had ever put out in its <laughs> long long life and wow uh, and the agricultural agent that came to kind of diagnose the trees when we explained that just this, this dying apple tree just the previous year had put forth more apples than we could even make use of. Hmm. He said, well, that's, it was, that was the final flourish. And I just, that phrase wow. stuck in my mind. Um, so I love that story that you just told. Um, and I just want to stick a pin on in two things. It, I, I talk a lot about the difference between feedback and criticism in my first book, which is called the Store Creative Handbook. Um, but the short, the, the punchline to the joke is feedback is solicited, comes from sources that you trust and respect, and is delivered in a spirit of trying to help you elevate your self and your art. Criticism mm -hmm. is unsolicited, comes mm -hmm. from people that you don't know and don't respect and don't trust and is delivered in order to elevate themselves at mm. your expense. Mm -hmm. So I'll just tell, share one quick anecdote about encouragement because I, I believe that encouragement is one of the most powerful tools that we have as teachers. Absolutely. Um, and I learned that the hard way because I did not get any encouragement at the beginning, hmm. other than my parents buying me a guitar and providing me with lessons at a, at a young age. Um, I remember my very first musical aspiration was to be in the school choir in fourth grade. And in order to get picked to be in the choir, we sang as a, as a class and the music teacher went around the room. And if he tapped you on the head, you were in. And if he didn't tap you on the head. And I remember him walking behind me at least four times and I was praying that he would tap me on the head and I never got that tap. Hmm. And my very first guitar teacher, after a month or so of lessons, when my parents said, does he have any promise, said that kid will never make enough money with music to pay for the lessons you've already paid for. Oh, geez. Now, <laughs> Sorry, man. No, I don't mean to laugh, but that is harsh. But so, oh. and we're all built differently. I'm the firstborn yeah. son of, uh, I'm, I'm the firstborn son, born in the year of the dragon, born a Leo, 
and born to a tough Irish woman and a stubborn Polak. I, I don't let stuff get me down. I don't let uh, the opinions of others really get in the way of, of what I, now that's a double-edged sword because I've done a bunch of stuff, um, you know, where I stepped in, stepped forward with a, a lot of uh, un, unearned confidence and, uh, mm. and was very unprepared for it and, and, and fell really flat on my face. But at the same time, I've been very lucky in that because I've had this kind of innate nature of believing in myself. I've, I've never really let somebody else's opinion get in my way. Mm -hmm. I said that, I understand that that is not most people's default setting. Right. So I think it's important to be really strategic about how you, how you share your work and who you share it with as mm. you start. And what yeah. I find is everything is baby steps. Do the mm. smallest thing that you are capable of doing right now so that you can build this habit and build this muscle of sharing your your art, whatever, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I wanted to stick a pin in um, was what you said about attachment, because I think that that's that, well, the, the Buddha says that attachment is the root of all suffering. Mm -hmm. And I agree. And what we are normally, what, what we are most often attached to are the things that take us out of the present moment, which is the only time and place that we have, the ability to employ the two things that we control the way we choose to see and what we decide to do next is right here and now because we cannot change the past and we cannot truly control what happens in the future. So if you're attached to a preconceived notion of who you are and what you're capable of based on past experience, you are complicit in your own suffering. And if you have a preconceived idea of what, uh, a good what success looks like what 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 you're meant to do and projecting that into the future um, even if you get it it you will find that it doesn't bring you anything any of the happiness that you expected it to mm -hmm. and, but if you can stay in the here and now and if you can frame your situation in such a way that you can see the opportunities and see the possibilities. There's always choices and you make a choice and step, step into that. That's what's next with integrity and intention. You will continue to move forward and you will continue to see possibilities and opportunities. And I'm not advocating that you don't have a goal, but you should also at the same time be open to what else could happen because mm. Again, I never would have guessed. I never had any intention of writing a book. Never had any, and I, I had no idea what creative on purpose was, was or was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we build these kind of endeavors every day, every moment. Every moment leads to the next moment, and it's this idea of just the, the forward motion, and that's where the for me going back to your inspiration question, I just, I love this journey and all I really require is to be able to make enough today so that I can get up again and do it tomorrow hmm. and I can continue to do that. So keeping things small um, and keeping things, you know, low cost until you can afford more, mm -hmm. I think is really important. You can make a huge impact as you know, just, with a simple free tool like zoom you can start a coaching business you can run a workshop you can yeah. put together uh, 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 some sort of mastermind or self-help group mm -hmm. there's just endless possibilities and so build that muscle find a find a, a small project that you can that you can work on right now and ship tomorrow mm -hmm. and you find that that things happen, that change happens. And that's what artists and creatives ultimately do. They right. transform the status quo. They make change happen. They have an impact on others. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, this has been great. 
so many things I could continue to ask you about, but uh, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll get together another time because. Uh, <laughs> So um, again, before we go, and, and uh, I, I got to say, I'm really excited to get back into this book, but I'm not going to get this one. I'm going to update, figure out how I can do that. I'm going to update my, my copy. I assume there are other folks out there that may need to be doing that. So what's the best way uh, we, can, we can find you uh, online, Scott, and, and uh, learn about maybe how we need to update our ebooks or or find the next thing it used to be that you could just put scott perry in a google and I oh would, man but then there was this <laughs> now, now there's this congressman from pennsylvania and this oh. named scott perry and evidently politicians and athletes um oh. rise higher in the algorithm mm. than, than yeah. musicians and authors so um but if you put creative on purpose in a Google search, or okay. if you want to just simply go to be creative on purpose.com. Okay. That's where I live online. You can email me from there. You can find my books from there. You can actually um, access, I think four or five chapters of Endeavor hmm. um, on the blog, just uh, click on the Endeavor ex excerpts and they're all um, curated for you there. Uh, That's great. There's also free chapters available uh, to download. Um, via an opt-in. Uh, I post a new blog post every Monday, but my email list gets it uh, a week earlier. Oh, nice. And um, yeah, and that's, that's where people can connect. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm always invite people to email me directly with questions, feedback, uh, comments, concerns, personal problems. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe after we get to know each other a little bit, but yeah, yeah, right. I, 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 I try to make myself uh, very avail available, especially to um, the folks that are on my email list. Sure. Great. Yeah, that's excellent. So folks, uh, this has been a conversation with Scott Perry. Yeah. Thanks again for your time. This has been great. I can't, I really, I really can't wait to get back into the book because, you know, I feel like it'll, it'll jumpstart clarify some of the things that I'm trying to do. Yeah. So. Well, David, before we sign off, I just want to, uh, number one, express my deep appreciation for you and the person that you are, but the work that you're doing, uh, I think is extremely important and necessary. And I wish you all of this uh, success that you can possibly achieve because I think that the message that you're sending and, and the, the tribe that you're starting to gather will be part of this movement that we're all trying to be mm. uh, engaged in, which is to improve the, the situation for all of us. So thank you very much for, for being you, for, for the work that you're doing and for allowing me to play a small role in that through our conversation today. It's been a lot of fun. Okay, that wraps up part two of the two-part series with Scott Perry. If you missed part one, we talked about the critical importance of creating within a community and how it's the mundane practice of uh, creativity that make inspiration happen, not necessarily those creative mountaintop moments that we kind of dream about. Uh, you can find that episode either in your podcast player listing or better yet, you can head over to the New Wild Media website where you can find show notes and links to help you dig deeper into the content. That address is newwildmedia.com slash stay creative and stay creative is all one word, by the way. On that note, one of the ways that I stay creative and energized is by constantly improving my production methods. Uh, for example, you will now find that I have created a transcript of this podcast. I will be transcribing some of my older podcasts. I have done that through an automation tool called Auphonic. I've also created some videos automatically using Auphonic. And it's pretty cool, pretty uh, kind of tricky to set up, but once you do it, it is awesome. You can just crank out videos and transcriptions. So 
If you're interested in that, go to newwildmedia.com and you can learn more. Thanks, everybody. This has been David Bourne, and I hope to see you out there on the net. Take care.